Hello guys, this is Donald's Movies and this is a bit of a different type of a video from the usual content because today I thought I'd bring you some Red Orchestra 2 tips that I have found and used a lot myself. So if you don't know what Red Orchestra 2 is, it's a highly realistic tactical shooter and honestly it's my all time favorite FPS game even though I played a bunch of those really popular ones. So without further ado, let's just start out with all of the 10 tips I have to give you today. Tip number 1. Using smoke. Only squad leaders and team leaders get a smoke, but squad leaders only get one and can resupply for more while team leaders get two at start. Now smoke is essential part of the game and can literally capture a point or even save the entire game. So if you have it, use it very wisely. Smoke is mostly used when attacking but can also be used when defending. So if you're attacking, it's best to throw it on the path to the objective or a critical point where you see a lot of your team dying. So it's ideal if you can cover the front of the enemy's positions with smoke so they can't just pick off the members of your team. Now when defending near flanks, Spartanoka here is a prime example. When the enemy is pushing into the church and you're trying to defend it so you have to get your team inside. It's best to throw smoke on the road so the enemies can't kill your advancing team so that you can get inside and defend the point because their main strategy is to prevent your team from entering the point and defending it but smoke can help you a lot with that and sabotage it. Tip number 2. Don't take squad leader or team leader if you don't know what you're doing. Now this is one of the most important tips and it annoys a lot of players. I mean you can literally lose the entire game if someone who doesn't know what he's doing takes team leader just at the start. Now I'm not saying that you should never take it but before you do it it's best to either do the tutorial and also play a few games with bots. I mean you have a bunch of empty servers so you can take the commander and see how everything works. As even though it isn't too complex to do artillery and all that stuff, you might not know how to do it and that can ruin the entire game for your team. And same is for the squad leader. A lot of people actually don't even realize that the squad leaders are one of the most important roles in the game, if not the most important. As in this game, you literally work as a mobile spawn point. So if you run in and get killed all the time, your squad will have to respawn all the way back and they will have to run back to the point, then they will get killed by the enemy team. So my tip would be to try to stay alive as long as you can and stay safe, especially if you enter an enemy position. Of course, don't just stay in cover, but try to stay as safe as you possibly can, because you don't really need kills, especially in this game, but especially with a squad leader, you don't really need kills, because you can get just enough points from people spawning on you. And also as a tip number one, try to utilize smoke to the best of effect. Tip number three, grenade throw to distract. Now this is a bit of an unusual tip but it has worked for me a lot of times and if you're a rifleman or just even a squad leader and you don't have any smoke and you're in a really really bad position and completely pinned down and you have a sniper and MG just waiting for you to come out of the cover even though the safe spot is just near the ridge. A grenade can actually help you a lot in that situation because they're generally used for clearing out rooms and all of that but they can be used for distractions as well. So for example if you throw a grenade in the opposite direction of course check your map to see if you don't have any teammates nearby but that explosion from the grenade might distract the guy that has you pinned down for at least a second which should give you just enough time to make a run for it and try to reach that other cover. Now of course this doesn't always work and won't always save you especially if the next cover is like 100 meters away but it can help you a lot sometimes so do try to do that. Tip number 4. Breaching into a room. Now this is a very advanced strategy that a lot of players overlook and you can even look at some real life SWAT videos that can help you out a lot with this. I mean when you're entering a room that is potentially not safe or filled with enemies you gotta be extremely careful. If you're alone using a method called slicing would work the best especially if you have an SMG. The way you would do this is you approach the door by being close to the wall then looking down the iron side slowly and carefully moving and looking into every bit of the room part by part and if you spot an enemy you can eliminate him pretty quickly without him even noticing. Now another way you can work is if you have a few teammates with you. Of course this won't work on random games but if you're on team speak and you can clear out pretty much every room if you have a good team. Now this is a general SWAT technique and you need around 2 or 3 people to enter a room safely. When you're approaching a room you have to split apart into your own spots. So one guy will get inside of the room and watch the right side while the other guy will get in around the same time and watch the left side so you all kind of split the room into your own pieces. And then if you have a third guy he can just watch the front. It is really important that you stay well coordinated and trust your other squad members. 
Because if they cover one part of the room and you cover the next, pretty much got the entire room covered while you couldn't do it that fast yourself. Now this is a bit of an advanced tactic, but if you got a good squad with you, you can be quite deadly. Tip number 5. Throwing grenades inside rooms without entering. Now you don't necessarily have to get inside of a room to throw a grenade or try to rush in. If you're throwing a grenade inside the room through a door or a window, you can use the other side of the door or even just the cover that is there and the grenade can bounce off it and kill whoever is inside. Now be really careful when throwing grenades, especially if it's really close quarters, because even though it's efficient and you can get multiple kills, you can also get team kills and injure your teammates. So check your map and also watch who is near you or behind you or at least warn them that you're throwing a grenade so you don't get any team kills. Tip number 6. Learn the maps. Now this is a very important thing as the game is very tactical and knowing the map gives you a huge advantage over your opponent. Now you should know where the best covers are, what the best places to snipe from and how to get inside caps and where to hide inside. Now you can go about learning the maps in a few ways without playing just in team games. First way to do it and this would help you a lot is if you find like maps just online or even in game. Just looking at it from the top down angle and seeing what is where so you get a general sense of direction. Next would be to actually go inside the game, although don't go on like full servers, you even have empty servers or just bot servers and try to just look around the map and see what is where and pretty much explore. Or another way is just to play the single player campaign, I mean yes the bots are like super bug there but the maps are about the same as they are in the multiplayer so that might give you the necessary experience you need. Tip number 7. Use voice chat. Now voice chat is really important in this game and it really changes the game a lot when you start using it. I mean communication is the key and in this game that is what actually wins it. You can even play with a team full of FPS pros but if you're just trying to get kills and don't know what you're doing and you don't have any organization you're probably gonna lose. So coordination in this game is very important. Now it's best if you have a plan or an organized team but voice chat can also work really good on random games especially on the first few servers that are usually near or full as a lot of people that play there try to actually win the game without just running in. However, there is always going to be people that are not going to listen or team kill or just rush in anyways or take other roles that they can't play. Just try to ignore them and do your best and just get the communication going. Tip number 8. Leading. And leading is essentially just aiming a bit in front of your running target in order to shoot him. Now, now the game has realistic bullet ballistics and you got to utilize them. If you see an enemy running in the same direction, try to aim just a bit in front of them and keep your aim and you should be able to eliminate. Now it is really hard at first, but once you play the game more you get used to it, you get used to the running speeds and just shooting in general, and it should get quite instinctive and not that hard to do. So leading is especially useful if you're a rifleman with a bolt action rifle, as you might only have that one chance before the target escapes to the next cover. Tip number 9. Reload when you can. Reloading can be really tricky in this game and there is never a rule about it, you just got to see what you can do depending on the situation. Now, this isn't really like Call of Duty where you just shoot one bullet then run a bit to the side while reloading. I mean a lot of times you can die because you wanted to reload and get that one extra bullet. But on the other side you can also die if you're missing that one bullet. So it really depends a lot on the situation. If you're certain you're not spotted and you're in a safe position it is a good idea to reload. And if an enemy is near you you might not do that. However if you have just one bullet left it might be a good idea to take a few steps back and reload. So that you're ready for whatever comes towards you. And lastly tip number 10. Running, make pauses. And the last tip is generally a very common tip, but it can help you out a lot in games. Now if you have the stamina bar, which runs out pretty quickly, and when it does, you can't really sprint anymore, thus you're moving at a lot slower speed, and you're quite an easy target for whoever is watching you. However, a good idea to fix that is to let's say you have three covers in front of you, and you want to go to the third one, now it is best to make a stop in the middle and lay down, as that is the fastest way to regain stamina and then continue on the sprint and not just like running directly to the third cover because that speed boost might just save your life next time you're running towards a new cover. And that is all I have for this video, thanks a lot for taking your time to watch it and don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe and also check out my Twitch stream. Now while videos will be going on the regular schedule and a few more red orchestra ones should be coming out soon, maybe like a certain class guide or more advanced tips. So anyways thanks so much for taking your time to watch this video and see you next time.